Good morning. This is the 36th District Democrats. We are so delighted to be interviewing this morning Debbie Carlson for Position 1, Seattle Public School Board. Welcome, Debbie. Over to you to introduce yourself, and thank you. Thank you. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm a parent. Uh, my, my child is at Olympic Hills Elementary. It's a Title I school. Um, she's in kindergarten, about to graduate. I'm also on the PTA at Olympic Hills as the advocacy chair. We are an LGBTQ family. A little bit about us as a family, we're mixed race. Uh, my partner and I are former um, foster parents um, and we have adopted our child. I live in the Olympic Hills Lake City area. And I, my, a bit of my professional background is that I've been working in the nonprofit sector for the last um, over 15 years. Um, for 10 of those years, I was an executive director for a organization, LGBTQ allyship that I co-founded and really led this organization into an LGBTQ economic and housing justice organization where we advocated at the state, county, and city level. Um, part of an example of, of um, my work is that in coalition, I worked to advocate for the creation of the Office of Labor Standards and um, ensured that LGBTQ workers was, were part of their scope of work in education and outreach, which we then um, secured funding for um, to do that work. Uh, I also have done some uh, advocacy at the city level, for example, around um, working in coalition around safe and safe and sick time um, and renters' rights. Um, I also have been working now in the early learning sector, working for, with child, um, child, uh, Children's Alliance and Washington Communities for Families. I love teaching. I'm a former ESL instructor and currently now a um, uh, early learning, um, part-time early learning uh, teacher. Thank you so much, Debbie. The first prepared question will be asked by Jeremy. And just to remind you, the first ding is annoying. The second ding is the end time. So you can talk through the first ding at the timer. Jeremy, over to you to ask the first question. As a school board director, name some issues or situations where you feel you can make a difference and share an example from your own life where you have applied specific skills toward an outcome. We're wanting to learn more about your vision, what your strategic approach would be, and what unique strength you would bring to the role. So I know that budget, the budget deficit is a big issue. And currently there really is a lack of transparency in numbers. Um, the uh, majority of the school board is in the process of um, voting to abdicate power to the superintendent. Um, through the student outcome focused governments model. Um, and I want to bring change into that. My approach is more of a community engagement approach, a trans transparency, accountability, in inclusion, really grounded in racial justice, LGBTQ justice. And I'm a bridge builder. Um, an example of that is um, in collaboration with Ontario Manos, um, an LGBTQ immigrant rights organization. I um, built a 14 member um, coalition of LGBTQ groups, racial justice groups and disability groups around the census um, where we educated why we need to show up for the census. Um, I, that's an example of my bridge building. Um, what I want to do and what I think is an important factor is really to um, not abdicate pow operational power to the superintendent's position, require more transparency around data, encourage there's current school board members that are asking for data to really understand the budget narrative and how the budget is being um, produced or um, the proposed cuts. And that is being discouraged by my incumbent. Um, and like, for example, my kid has an IEP and I'm we're not sure about the special education budget, which is part of the largest part of um, SPS's budget. We need numbers, we need to understand what's going on and we need authentic community engagement where um, the competence of Seattle families, we're bringing them along. And my opponent is not, her strong suit is not around community engagement. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Debbie. The next question this morning will be asked by Ginny. Over to you, Ginny. 
Hi, enrollment in SPS has declined since 2020. What steps would you take to reverse this decline? So we know that there's three reasons, main reasons why the decline is um, gentrification and people, um, families leaving Seattle, um, the low birth rate of um, families, um, and also though the dissatisfaction of services and what's happening um, with the school district. The only way and area that the school district has control over is that dissatisfaction. So I want to take an approach that is inclusive around racial justice and LGBTQ justice that engages community, that there's a transparent message, really bringing community along around the decisions and what's going on. Um, and I want to be a bridge builder, working with board members, um, directors, as well as with community um, and the district and really bringing um, solutions. So I know this is going to be a difficult time. But I think that th this is a time to start to build back more confidence, um, especially with legislators that are key in funding and future funding, which have which what I have heard during the interim, they don't have um, confidence in the budget of um, the district and what's going on, especially around special education. And so I want to bring back that confidence. I want to be part of the solution. I want to work across sectors, I want to work with community, I want to work with teachers and educators and, and be part of that solution. Um, and, uh, and I think we need, and at this time, what I'm really running around, it, running for, is to ensure that we're not abdicating our power to uh, the superintendent's position where we are accountable as directors and that we're showing up with community and being transparent in what we're doing and why we're doing it. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. The next question this morning will be asked by Laura Marie. Over to you, Laura Marie. Hi, Debbie. What is your vision of a well-resourced school and how do you practice equity and inclusion? May I ask a clarifying question around this before my time starts? Sure. Um, so when you, are you talking about literally a school or when you say a resource school, are you talking about the district? That is a solid question and we haven't defined it before now. I was imagining a specific school and crossed over to each of the schools, but if somebody had a different idea, go ahead and chime in. Debbie, I think you've asked a great question, and I don't know if we had consensus and clarity around what that is. So I think it's up to you to figure out how you would want to respond to it. Correct. Okay. Well, I'll do a little bit of both. Great. Sorry. Right, thank you for asking, and uh, let's let's go to the question. And we're excited to hear some thinking from you. So again, I want to really be clear about what I see as the problem. And that really is a lack of transparency, accountability, um, and confidence at the state level within community, um, and just a lack of communication and community engagement. The process that I want to take is really um, working across and build and um, bridge building with directors, community, and the district and, teach and educators. Um, having a transparent process, really grounding in racial equity, um, being inclusive. Um, what I really see, and I think it's key to really build back that confidence at the legislative level so that we um, can work well um, with the people that are making the decisions around our pur the purse strings. What I see as a well-resourced well school is to have enough teachers and paraeducators to have a full-time nurse, at least full-time school counselors, um, having a robust early education program, after school options that families can engage in, um, having robust art, music, technology, and sports, um, having high quality, excellent special education for, for families, um, availability of, of field trips, well-resourced, um, smartly resourced transportation, um, and really continually checking in with a family within the school about what's working, what is desired, so that there's that community engagement and understanding of what 
what families want and why are they continuing to stay in the school system. We want to ensure that they're staying in the school system and that's really about satisfaction, building trust and that communication, transparency and uh, community engagement. Thank you so much. Thank you. The last prepared question this morning will be asked by Shep. What are your thoughts on addressing the budget deficit? And if necessary, how would you approach deciding which schools to close? So this is going to be a really tough year in um, for the, the, the school board and for families. Um, so again, I want to bring communities along with their voices and um, have a process where there's people are understanding what's going on and why, and that we're open to taking suggestions and bringing that to the board and therefore to the, to the district. What I, um, I want to, I think it's imperative that we understand what programs are popular, what programs are that like Seattle families um, want within their school districts. I think that we, schools, in determining with schools around the enrollment, the lowest enrollment schools, if there's a higher enrollment school nearby, that that's one area and one way to determine around consolidation. I think that there's other factors around um, racial equity. And if there's programs that are really addressing racial equity, that those continue in those consolidated schools that were again, centering um, children of color, immigrant children, and in our analysis and how we move forward with those budget decisions. But again, it's really about building that trust and bringing both staff, educators, families along, knowing that this is going to be a difficult process, that there's no way out of that. But I think that transparency, communication and holding ourselves accountable, again, not abdicating power um, to the superintendent, to the school district, um, being able to ask questions and getting a really clear understanding of the narrative of the budget, why, why they're, what is being proposed and why, and that we as board directors are really well informed and that we can communicate back to communities. Thank you so much, Debbie. We'll move into the follow-up questions from our e-board. I will plop myself in the queue at some point. I will see who will raise their hand first. Anyone going to wanna to go first or should I go first? Let me see if there's hands. I will go first. I am a parent of a trans kid who is also serving as a school board director, a student school board director um, currently. I would love to hear more thoughts from you around how we can make sure our schools are safe, welcoming, affirming, and inclusive for our LGBTQ kids, but particularly for our trans kids. Thank you. So I also have a trans kid who came out at the age of three, who we socially transitioned when she insisted who she is. And so we honored that. Um, what we have done, what we did is we created a document out of research around what our expectations are of the administration and teachers and how to keep our child safe. I think tools like that should be available to parents with trans and non-binary children um, so that parents know how to advocate with teachers with the school district, expectations around bathrooms, ex expectations around honoring um, uh, pronouns, and also from around school trips to um, uh, any type of emergency that it's understood that there is, a, if they can't get a hold of us, that there is a safe um, teacher or administrator that they can go to that will protect my, my child's identity. Thank you so much. Laura Marie, next question to you. Thank you so much for that, Debbie. Um, my question I'm asking of all the candidates, uh, what is really the most interesting or what you think would be your favorite part of the school director role? And what is something that you think the public may not know or understand about the school board director role? What I think I would enjoy the most is I'm, I'm a collaborator and coalition builder. Um, and I love, I, and I'm also a community organizer. Um, so my background and what I'm really proud in and brought me into the nonprofit world is community organizing and really listening to communities, better understanding what the needs are, 
Um, I see myself as a representative. And so although my identities and how I, how I move in the world and my positionality makes, has an impact on how I show up, I believe strongly that um, solutions need to be community led. And I want to be part of that and that solution. I think that, I think that also part of community organizing is teaching community how systems work. So understanding what the role of the board is and what it isn't and being transparent about that so we know where power lies. Thank you so much. More follow-ups from our board? Jeremy. Um, just want um, um, you to follow up on something you mentioned in that last answer. You said, uh, tell, um, explaining to community what the role, role of the board is and isn't. Can you, can you, can you just sort of give us a one minute version of what your speech would be on that? What it is and what it isn't? Well, I would wanna be transparent about what our decisions are um, and what they're not. So we don't, um, we, for example, we're not accountable for SPS staff, but we are accountable um, and we, we are basically the collective boss of the superintendent. So that's where our power is. Um, we, I wanna be really clear about, we can make policies that guide, but we don't implement them. That's the superintendent and then their leadership to do that. Um, so really making sure that, that um, community understands where our power is and isn't, and then also advising them, here are pressure points about what you can do. Um, I think that demystifying systems is part of racial equity work, is part of LGBTQ equity work. Um, and that we empower communities to make a difference for themselves with their own community-led solutions. Thank you. Is there a Laura Marie? Uh, I think you mentioned that your kids are at a Title I school. And can you tell us a little bit about how the funding is looking at your school and where, where the issues are and where you would like to see the greatest improvements and how that might look at some of the other tiered schools in the district? I know a little bit about um, funding. I know we're losing teachers. We're consolidating some programs. We're losing some programs. Um, specifically, we're losing technology, um, which is concerning. Um, I also know that um, there's a, some teachers just came to me and talked about how there was a there's a summer program that um, uh, that should be inclusive of um, students with uh, living with disabilities, but um, certain students are being eliminated be based on said budget cuts. So um, marginalized communities are being impacted. I also learned through our kindergarten teacher that Jumpstart is being um, eliminated, which is an important which is an important program for um, students coming into K through 12 and important for teachers. Thank you so much, Debbie. I'll pause here for a moment. If there are no more follow-ups from our board, I'd love you to have the last minute to share some closing thoughts for us. Over to you. I don't see any hands, so please give us one minute of anything else you'd like to share. I think that this is a really important time in the school districts um, and the school board's history where we really need um, bold leadership that is community driven and that is centered around community to build that trust back. Um, I do not believe that we should, um, I don't believe in the student outcome focused governments model that in a cookie cutter form. I think that there needs to be adjustment that really adjusts to the Seattle community to work well. And right now my opponent is really moving that forward in a very cookie cutter form that isn't, um, doesn't doesn't mirror or reflect the needs right now within our community. And I think that that's gonna further harm and create distrust both on the ground level, but also at the legislative level, which was around funding and that's, and that's detrimental. Thank you so much, Debbie. This concludes the formal part of our interview. We will stop recording and Jeremy